everybody, Matt Scudero with the Credit Research Foundation. Welcome to our second in a uh, trio of micro learning sessions, um, all about third party relationships for the credit discipline. This particular topic is on how to maximize performance. Um, I'm excited to have Sam Fensterstock back with us for our second, second micro learning session. Uh, Sam is with AGA, and uh, AGA is a um, platinum partner of CRF, longtime platinum partner. Um, and we're truly appreciative of all that they do, not only for CRF, but for the discipline as a whole. Um, and today's session on the um, uh, third party relationship is how to maximize performance for that relationship. And um, we're going to hit this one from two levels. And we're going to hit it from a senior credit executive, those that probably own the, uh, the relationship, probably own the contract, uh, but also some questions on those that are more operationally uh, focused on the relationship. So kind of two different levels, a couple of different questions. Um, Sam, thank you again for um, sharing your time with us. And uh, before we start, any opening comments uh, for the group that may be thinking about maximizing performance? Oh, I think we're going to cover everything, I think, in this session here that will help uh, help. Uh the folks in the audience understand from an agency standpoint, you know, how we can, you know, mutually help maximize, you know, you know, what we do and, and the, the results that we deliver. Yeah, great, great. Why don't we start with thinking about the, uh, the senior credit executive, those that probably own the relationship, have signed the contract, but may not be in the, the daily operational role of the relationship. And uh, when you think about the senior credit executive, how can they maximize the relationship and the performance of the portfolio that they own um, uh, with their third party uh, relationship? Sure, you know, it's a great question. You know, at an agency, once again, you know, our revenue is directly dependent upon our ability to be successful in, in collecting the accounts that are placed with us. And no agency engages, you know, with, with a customer you know, in order to do a bad job. You know, we all want to go out and, and be successful. Um, but many times what we find is that once we've engaged with our client, you know, I wouldn't say they're roadblocks, but they're things that happen along the way that make it more difficult for us to be very successful. And what we, what I try to employ to my clients at the senior, you know, especially the senior most people at the beginning is that, you know, in order for us to be successful, it's a partnership. It's not just a one-sided relationship. And, you know, when you place an account with us, you know, just because you sent us over, you know, a statement and gave us the name of the debtor doesn't mean that we're going to be able to jump right on it and go out and be successful collecting it, you know, with just that one piece of paper, right? And, and sometimes, you know, there's a misnomer out there that you, you send somebody over a statement, the name of the customer contact information, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to send them anything else, you know, and I can't tell you how many times that from the top down, you know, at companies that we work with, that sometimes the message isn't clear upon what an agency really needs in order to be successful. And sometimes what happens is after, say, an agreement is signed, you know, the senior person sort of removes themselves from the process and leaves it to people below them who then dictate what's going to happen going forward. Um, and so what we normally say is, um, you know, have a good onboarding call when you start the relationship and lay out what the um, we have the groundwork as to what needs to be done on both sides for, you know, to, for, for, for you to be able to have the highest probability of success, right? Because many times what happens is that if you don't lay out that groundwork right at the beginning, you have so many bumps in the beginning that the relationship goes sour versus being something that can be fixed. So as it's a senior level, I would say that, listen, when you bring in engaged an agency, make sure day one, that everybody has, is on the same page and that you know exactly what needs to be done. The good thing you'll find is that collection agencies are extremely flexible. Like we have to bend over backwards to meet our clients' needs. Sometimes they don't bend over backwards though to meet ours. And that's where the problems arise that lead to not having the desired results, which is collecting as much money as possible. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. We gotta collect money. And, and once again, you know, an agency, we don't want to spend a lot of time working on something and then not be successful on it. And only to be because there was a communication breakdown or something happened along the way that could have been prevented, whether it was caused by us or caused by our client, that then made the situation where the recovery didn't occur. So, so once again, you know, making sure that at the beginning of the relationship that everybody's on the same page 
and then following through with what everybody agrees to, you know, in the relationship. And then obviously checking in on a monthly basis and making sure that things are going along the right, in the right direction. A lot in those uh, couple of words that you said, right? Okay. Set the tone, um, good communication, um, have the right process in place and agreed upon process. Um, and agreed upon documentation, right? And I, I consider documentation in that communication piece, right? Um, yeah. It's not only verbal, but uh, but it's written and it's uh, making sure you have the right uh, documents to be able to perform uh, at the maximum level. Well, you know, what's funny, Matt, is that, you know, and, and once again, um, if you think about it, and, and, and this happens where, let's say a collection agency, the customer just sends a file over of a spreadsheet of the accounts, the header data, invoice number, and the amount of money owed. Right. And they send it to the collection agency and say, here, this is all we can give you. Right. We can't get you invoices. We can't get your statements. You know, we can get you invoices on a one off basis as you need them, but we can't really get them to you. All we can tell you is the invoice number and the amount of money. Owed. You're a credit professional, Matt. If I gave that to one of your collectors, would that be sufficient for them to go out and collect the invoice? Right? What's, the, what's the first thing that the, 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 the customer is going to ask for, you know, when they when they had that first phone call? Looking for that invoice copy. Right. Saying. So they, so you can't send me the invoices, right? But you want me to be successful collecting the receivable. I'll take a crack at it. Of course I will. But 85% of the time, I'm going to be coming back to you in a couple of days asking for that invoice, right? So why not just get the invoices at the beginning or give access to the invoices? These are little things that stop recoveries from coming in the door. I mean, that's just, it's, it's a fact of life. So if you wouldn't expect your internal collector to be successful with this amount of information, why would you expect your third party collection partner to be more successful than your internal collector with less information? Yeah. You know, does that, does that make sense? Yeah, you know? So, so once again, at the beginning of the relationship, if you establish what needs to be done in order for success to happen, well, if your customer, my customer, doesn't give it to me, then I know I'm never going to be ultimately successful as I can be. You know, no matter what I do, no matter how good I, I perform, no matter how I throw my best people at it, if I can't get the things that I need in order to be successful, then how can I expect to be successful? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and once again, and, and we're just since we're talking about documents, I mean, most collections will tell you the same thing I'm telling you. It's not this is not unique to AGA. At yeah. the time of placement, contract, invoice, statement, you know, personal guarantee, whatever that documentation is, if you give it to your agency partner at the beginning, you, 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 all, you automatically put them 10% ahead in their ability to be successful. And if you don't, because now they're always going to be chasing you for that information. It's, it's never going to, it's never going to disappear. They're always going to need it. And if you think about it this way, if you are going to go down the path and suing somebody at some point, if the, if, the, if the account gets to the point of litigation, the attorney is going to need a current statement as of the date that he gets the account, not as the date you placed it, but as the date they got the account. So you're going to have to get this documentation anyway. Now I understand companies have system issues and there's you no, know, sometimes getting documentation is not that easy, but once again, you can't expect your agency to be really, really successful. If you don't help them and give them the, the things that they need, to achieve ultimate success. My best results are when my clients give me everything I need right up front. Whether I have access to their system to pull documentation when I need it, or they get it to me, my the people who we perform the best for, the people who give us all that, and that comes from senior management at the, at the client the, demanding that that gets done so that we can do the best job that we can. And once again, this is, like I said, this is not unique to AGA. If you talk to any of my colleagues in the industry, they'll tell you the same thing. Sure. Sure. Um, we, we probably jumped into that second bullet point in question there, but um, a real good takeaway for me was, was this, and it was um, a couple of sound bites that you said. The expectation would be you would deliver something internally to your staff so they could be successful. You would deliver that same thing to your third party relationship so that they can be successful. Um, and it is a partnership, right? And it's a partnership of success for both sides. Yeah. The, uh, the client certainly um, benefits from that. Really good comments. Uh, why don't we switch gears a little bit? And um, you know, we, we talked about the leadership relationship, um, but there's also the, a colleague who performs the daily tasks, which you know, the expectations there, it can be different, it, it can be unique. Uh, with that in focus, um, 
you know, what can you define? What are the attributes that maximize the results from, we call it the daily processor standpoint versus setting up the contract and the, um, the relationship side? So, you know, this is something I talk about with my colleagues many times, you know, when we sit down at, at like CRF and other events, we sit there and talk about, you know, our clients and how things can go better and, and things of that nature. And, and once again, the things I'm going to talk about are not unique to, to AGA. Um, you know, at most organizations, there's multiple levels of, of management, right? And, and so if you think about a large, you know, Fortune 2000 type company, you know, senior director of credit is the guy who's typically going to engage with myself or my colleagues in order to, you know, vet our services, contract with us and, 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 you know, and put the relationship in place. Many times after that point, you know, they're removed from it. And now someone within their organization is managing the relationship. And that person may have people below them who are also responsible for working with an agency. And every company does it differently. Some companies as a point person, sometimes, you know, you're going back to the collector who initially handled the account internally. I mean, every organization does it differently. Um, but what happens in many times is that there's a breakdown in communication somewhere. All right. And so I'll just throw a couple examples at you. Um, client of mine has a lawsuit in effect for $100,000. Um, and we need to get an affidavit filled out and signed and done in order to move the case along. And I have to call my client 10 times or email them 10 times over a two month period of time. Now, I'm not going to the person who I, the director, I, I'm not dealing with them. I'm dealing with the individual at the company who we're told to talk to on this file and they're not being responsive to us to the point where they then have to go to the director and say, hey, this person's been unresponsive. Can you please help me out? And then it finally comes to us, right? Or I had one this morning, $32,000 garnishment. We need the bank account on file of the customer. And we're going to an underling at, at my client, you know, for that information. And they're not responding to us to the point where I have to now go to the director and say, hey, listen, we have a $32,000 garnishment we're trying to get collected and no one's replying to me, you know? Or I've got a settlement offer for $15,000 on the table where I have money and there's a breakdown in communication because the fact that the person who set the, set the contract in place, created the relationship has sort of removed themselves and now the underlings are sort of handling it and don't have the sense of urgency around it, you know, that I would think they would, given the fact that it's their money and we're trying to collect it for them. Mm -hmm. And so I've heard this from most of my peers is that, you know, they give us the receivable to collect it and then they'll help us out when we need help to get them the back their own money. And, 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 and it doesn't make sense, you know? And, and then if we don't collect it, then we get judged that we didn't do a good job, but yet our own client was not responsive to us. So my, my thought is, is that if you want to have an agency do the best job for you, right? You sort of have to treat them almost like they're your own, they're your own employee, you know? And what would be the expectation internally of your people? Well, you got to do the same thing to your agency if you want them to be successful. I mean, you know, some people, they turn it over to an agency, they don't care. It's written off, everything's found money, they don't care, right? Other people turn it over to an agency, it's like we owe them the money, right? And if we don't collect it, it was our fault but I didn't make the initial credit decision and send out the order. You know, I'm just trying to you know, do my job. And listen, we know that, you know, there's a, there's a cost of doing business effect in corporate America. You got to take risk, right? You, you, you got to take risk and you're going to have, everybody's going to have collection issues, whether you make the best credit decisions, use the best models, you know, have the best process, you're always going to have somebody who's not going to pay. And that's why there's so many collection agencies. If, if, you know, if there wasn't the need, you wouldn't have the number of agencies that, that are out there in the marketplace. However, if you want an agency to be successful, and have the highest level of recovery, it's a partnership. It, 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 you can't just say here, go do it. And if you're not successful, you know, I'm gonna fire. Remember, collection agencies don't have contracts with our customers, right? We're all at will providers. We have service agreements in place that say what the fees are, but you know, most of my clients can fire me tomorrow without, you know, and walk away. They don't because we do a good job. However, you know, it, it, it truly is a partnership if you want to have the best results. You can't just say, okay, I chose them here and there they are. You know, it, it has to be, you know, a two-way street. It's working together, right? Yeah. Uh, communication, responsiveness, timeliness, 
Um, that's important for the relationship. It's important for the success of the collectability of not only a single transaction, but the portfolio as a whole. Um, and the end result is just uh, greater than, uh, you know, if you lack in that area, right? Yep. But why, why don't we move on to the last question? We already hit um, some of it, but maybe have some closing comments on it. You know, staying with the same topic, um, you know, about lessons and training. Can you share with us um, those things that can be followed when developing a policy and procedure for managing your third party um, bad debts or just your portfolio of bad debts in general? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. You know, you know um, everything is dependent upon the volume of your placements, right? So if you're a company that, you know, doesn't have a huge need to use an agency, you're probably have a different policy and process in place than if you're somebody who's placing accounts on a daily basis, you know? Also, you know, um, everything's dependent upon your systems and the, and the technology you're using. So, you know, if you're using it, you know, in order to cash platform that has agency integration, you know, you're going to have one process versus someone who's doing it all manually. So, you know, everybody's a little bit different, but I got to tell you what I like the most, like when I see a client of mine who places manually, when I say manually, it means they're either going to my website or they're going, um, you know, sending emails out, placing individual files, they have a placement sheet. And that placement sheet has a checklist of all the things that they need to send to the agency. And typically the ones who do it the best, the checklist is totally complete. You know, it's the credit application, it's the personal guarantee, it's a copy of the invoice, it's a statement, the notes out of their internal system, right? So they're giving like a package to the agency that the agency doesn't have to come back to them for anything at all, other than if there's a dispute, understanding the nature behind the dispute and, and some feedback. But from a document perspective, the agency has everything they ever need. They'll never have to go back. And that eliminates a lot of back and forth that a lot of people really don't like. I mean, one of the biggest complaints with collection agencies is the amount of back and forth. Well, that amount of back and forth is many times dictated by the customer not getting the information to the agency that's needed. So what I normally say is, 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 is you should have a, a, a process, a placement process, right? And, and depending on the, the nature of your need for a, a, uh, an agency based on volume, that process may be different. So if you're placing 200 accounts a week, well, you're not probably doing that manually as a one-off. That's probably going with a spreadsheet that's being delivered to the agency and then back of documentation is being delivered secondarily. So if that's your process, then you got to have somebody that's documented that says, okay, this is what we're going to do each time an account is sent. If it's being done electronically versus being done manually, what I'm saying is that no matter what, where you fit in the mix, you should have it documented, you know, and laid out so there's no question about what's going to happen, you know, and then that process should be followed every time. Like my clients, the best ones that they send me that same information on every account, not on half of the accounts, right? Because then half the accounts you're chasing for and half the ones you're not, you know, have their, make it consistent, you know, so that the same information is delivered every time. And then also have a realistic, um, you know, realistic understanding of, of time and process and how long it takes for your agency. You know, so for example, if you want them to be really effective in a short period of time, you can't place an account and then wait three weeks to get back to them with information, you know, that they need. So, so if you want to maximize their performance, be responsive to their needs. The biggest holdup at agencies, I hate to say it, is lack of responsiveness from our own clients in helping us understand what's happening in an account when we need your help. Believe me, if we don't need your help, we're not going to come to you. We'd rather just collect it on our own. But if we come to you, be responsive because that's going to benefit both of us. Real good. Starts at the top, set the tone, yep. set a good process in place, set the uh, put the right documents in place. From an operational standpoint, it sounds like good communication, responsiveness, timeliness in the in that communication and be consistent with your process gives you the best opportunity to maximize your performance um, on the that activity real good 100%. sam thank you any closing comments uh, from your side no listen i appreciate that you taking the time out you know sometimes uh you know this agency topic is not the most glamorous so i appreciate you guys taking a whack at it you know every agency wants to do a great job for our customers we, you know none of us want to work for nothing you know and that's what happens if we don't collect and so Anything that you can provide to the marketplace that can give them a better understanding of how we can make it a more win-win relationship, you know, it's going to be beneficial to everybody. So I appreciate you, you, you poking into this topic. Oh, thank you, Sam, for sharing your time with us. An important topic um, and one I think uh, folks are going to get a lot out of. Um, I also want to thank AGA, right? So I think I opened with their um, 
your sponsorship, platinum uh, partner sponsorship of the foundation, um, long time partnership. And uh, we wanna say thank you for uh, their support and their continued support. We're gonna close this session at this time. Um, and uh, we're gonna get to our third session for folks, uh, which is how to measure and evaluate results. So again, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, I know Sam's always open uh, to supporting the discipline. Uh, you can reach out to Sam if you need the foundation to support you um, and uh, get you in contact with Sam. We'll, uh, we can certainly do that as well. Thanks folks. Thank you.